Assalamualaikum, greetings and welcome to our webinar. In this pre-recorded webinar, we are going to do a presentation on experiment 11, which is air fluidization characteristics. The lecturer in charge of this experiment is Dr. Irwan Dahlan. First, let me introduce our group members. I am Mahmoud Hazmi bin Kairun Nizam. Next, Lohli Singh. Iswara Anak Ilaki Sentil Kemarin and Diana Sabrina Binti Azmi. Greetings everyone. Now I'm going to explain about introduction for air fluidization. First of all, do you guys know what is air fluidization? Air fluidization is a typical fluidized bed which is a cylindrical column that contains particles. This column will be true by fluid which is either gases or liquid flows into it. Air fluidization is a process similar to liquefaction, whereby a granular material is converted from a static solid-like state to a dynamic fluid-like state. Fluidization is also one of the methods available for contacting granular solids with fluids. This fluidization technique was first started by the petroleum refineries to find a better catalytic cracking process than the fixed bed. Now, Let's see some of the advantages of this fluidization. The main advantages of the fluidized bed are greater interfacial surface area of contact and high rates of heat transfer. Furthermore, it is also good in solid handling and avoidance of heat spots. Now, let's see how does air fluidization occurs. This all starts when a fluid passes upward to a bed of solids there will be a certain pressure drop across the bed required to maintain the fluid flow. Depending upon the bed geometry and particle characteristics, the following phenomena occur with gradual increase in fluid velocity. There are four various phenomena or better known as kinds of contacting of solids sped by fluid. As we can see from the diagram, there are four phenomena. The first one is fixed bed. The second one is minimum fluidization or also known as incipient fluidization. Third one is bubbling bed or also known as aggregative fluidization. The last one is neophytic transfer or better known as smooth fluidization. Now I'm going to explain further about these four phenomena in upcoming slide. First, we start with fixed bed. This phenomena occurs at low gas velocities. The pressure drop across the bed increases with gas velocity, but the particles are stationary and the flow of fluid is through a fixed bed. Now, we go to the second one which is minimum fluidization. As the bed velocity is gradually increased, a certain velocity is reached when the bed starts expanding. At this point, the pressure drop across the bed equals the mass per unit area of the bed. This point is known as point of minimum fluidization. The movement of solid is at superficial velocities far below the terminal settling velocities of the solid particles. The process corresponds to a situation which is approximately equivalent to indirect settling. During this point, the pressure drop is maximum and the force exerted by the fluid must not only act against the force of gravity the particles but also must overcome friction forces between the particles. The neophytic or smooth fluidization starts once the particles are separated. These friction forces drop off and pressure drop required to maintain the fluidization is less. In the order for smooth fluidization occurs, the density difference between the particle and fluid should be small. This is a typical of liquid fluidized beds. Okay. Now let us move on to the last one which is bubbling fluidization. As the velocity is still further increased compared to smooth fluidization, the pressure drops continues to remain constant until the bed has assumed the loosest stable from packing. The density difference between particle and fluid should be very large in order to smooth fluidization occurs. This is typical of gas fluidized bed and is characterized characterized by the gas rising through solid bed in a bubble form. For the next two slides, I am going to talk about the fluidization theories. 
First, we will be looking into the important equations and formulas for the periodization. First one is Froude's number. As we can see, the equation for Froude's number is NFR equals to V square over GTP. This equation is the criterion to determine the nature of periodization. If the NFR is less than unity, smooth periodization occurs. If NFR is greater than unity, blubbing periodization will occur. Thus, this equation is important to determine the nature of periodization. Second one is Egan's equation. This equation states that as the superficial gas velocity increases, the pressure drop across the bed also increases. When the gas velocity is high enough that the attack forces on the particles equals the weight of the particles, the, thus the bed becomes fluidized. By using this equation, the pressure drop across a fixed bed can be calculated. The porosity from the equation can be found by fraction of void of bed volume over volume of pack tower. At the onset of fluidization, the pressure drop across the bed equals the net effective weight of the bed per unit area of cross section. The last one is Lewa correlation. This correlation is to find the minimum fluidizing velocity when the gas is the fluidizing medium. When the gas velocities increase beyond the minimum fluidization velocity, bubbles can be formed. The point at which this occurs depends on the particle size and density. Smaller particles tend to experience smooth fluidization, meanwhile, large particles tend to start bubbling at the point of minimum fluidization. Now, we are going to see terms used in this fluidization. Do you guys know how does the particle become fluidized? Okay, for your information, particles become fluidized when an upward flowing gas imposes a high enough drag force to overcome the downward force of gravity. What is meant by drag force? Okay, the drag force is a frictional force imposed by gas on a particle. The particle imposes an equal and opposite drag force on the gas. Thus, as a particle becomes more fluidized, it affects the local gas velocity around it due to drag forces. This effect is minimal for spherical particles compared to irregular shaped particles. Second one is, what is the term used for movement of a gas through fluidized bed? This can be described using the two-phase theory. This figure shows the movement of gases through the particle bed. According to this theory, gas moves through the bed in two ways. First is as bubbles and the second is as a part of an emulsion as shown in the diagram. The two-phase theory is represented by the equation Q bed equals to Q emulsion plus Q bubbles, where the Q bed is the total gas volumetric flow rate through the bed. Q emulsion is gas volumetric flow rate through the dense phase phase and Q, Q bubbles is gas volumetric flow rate through the bubbles. Up to minimum fluidization point, all the gas moves through the bed via emulsion phase. That, that's all for me. I hope you guys can understand. Thank you. Bed. Assalamualaikum and greetings everyone. My name is Liana Sabina Binti Azmi. I am going to present the objectives of this experiment. There are three main objectives of this experiment. The first objective is to study the fluid flow across fits and fluidized beds. The second objective is to determine how will the superficial velocity of the fluidizing medium affect the pressure drop across the bed and also to compare the minimum fluidization velocity obtained from the experiment with its theoretical value obtained from calculation. And the last objective is to study the effect of Reynolds number on the porosity of the bed.
Now, I am going to explain the experimental setup for this experiment. This experiment consists of a few components which include a column known as column K. Column K has an internal diameter of 50 mm with length of 1300 mm made up of Duran glass. The particles in this column are supported using perforated plate which is placed at the lower part of the tank and also protected by a tray which is located at the top of the tank. The column is also connected to adapters or devices with measuring connection for differential pressure gauge. For this experiment, the fluidizing medium is the air. The fluidizing medium, or air, is drawn through a compressor labelled as P2, which is fitted with a relief valve and a fine regulating head. The air flow rate can be regulated by using valve V6 and metered by the calibrated rotameter. Now, I am going to explain the procedure of this experiment. The procedure of this experiment is based on the given figure. The first step of this experiment is to measure the pressure loss of an empty tube with feet at the bottom. The next step is to add on a quantity of iron exchange resin into the column until the height of the bed is equal to the diameter of the column. Next, open valve V7. Now, we can start the operation with the minimum flow rate by regulating valve V6. We will have to wait for a few minutes until steady state is achieved. Once steady state is achieved, jot down the rotameter reading, the pressure loss, and the height of the bed. Next, gradually increase the air flow rate by regulating valve V6 and repeat the procedure. In this experiment, the behavior of the bed must be observed for every flow rate. This ex experiment continues until the bed is completely fluidized and becomes turbulent. Lastly, the data obtained from this experiment is tabulated. Next, safety precautions. Having a robust set of overall laboratory safety rules is essential in avoiding disasters in the lab. I will first start with the laboratory rest code. As we described, the laboratory rest code set a clear policy for the clothing employees should avoid wearing to prevent accidents or injuries in the lab. Some of the laboratory test codes are wear safety glasses or goggles, wear gloves when using any hazardous or toxic agent, shoes must be worn in the lab, and girls with long hair must tie back their hair in the laboratory, and wear hard hats before entering the lab. To general lab safety, turn off and equipment will not be used. Place back the chemicals on shelves with labels after use. No food or drink is allowed in the lab. Even though lab tables and counters are wiped down before each lab setup, 
As a result of some regulatory exercise, temper residues may be present on the tables. Tables smoke or run while working in the lab. Read all precautions and instructions or the standard of procedure before operating the equipment. Since we are in a chemical engineering laboratory, chemical safety rules are a must. This includes handling chemicals, reagents, and stains carefully and follow all warnings. All bottles and containers are labeled as the contents and potential hazards. For example, a label says to avoid contact with substance and fumes, do so. For potentially hazardous chemicals, information on the hazards, proper handling, and cleanup is provided on Material Safety Data Sheets MSDS. These are available in the lab. It is highly recommended to spend the first few minutes of the lab consulting the MSDS to look for reagents and chemicals down the sink. Dispose of this only in designated containers. Clean up the work area before leaving. Wash all glassware and put it back where you found it. Place all the piece lights and the cover slips in the designated containers. Leave tables clean when you leave the lab. Throw away any trash you generate. If you are the last person to leave the lab, make sure to lock all the doors and turn off all ignition sources. Result and discussion. When conducting this experiment, we are observing the height of bed and the pressure drop within the air fluidized bed by varying the flow rate of air in the unit of meter cube per hour. The flow rate of air is regulated by WAF and metered by the calibrated rotameter. The height of bed is then measured in meter which the measuring equipment is placed beside the column of bed. While the pressure drop across fixed or fluidized bed is calculated through observe the manometer reading. Table of different flow rates of air and their respective height of bed and pressure drop are tabulated. We have done 5 trials to get the average data and standard deviation is calculated to make sure there are minimum errors in this experiment. These two tables had showed that when the air flow rate increased, the height of resin bed and the pressure drop across the bed also increased. This is because the height of bed and the pressure drop is proportional to the air velocity that flows through it. Next, the pressure drop per unit height of bed is calculated by taking the average pressure drop divided by the average height of resin bed, while the velocity is calculated by taking the flow rate divided by the area of the column. The data calculated using Excel are tabulated into a table which consists of pressure drop per unit height of bed, velocity, pressure drop per unit height of bed in terms of log scale, velocity in terms of log scale, and pressure drop in terms of log scale. From the table, we can find that experimental delta P over L increased when air velocity was low. This is because the bed experienced fixed bed stage which the bed height remain almost constant. The pressure drop increases is because of the frictional force experienced by the inlet airflow increase with velocity. However, delta P over L decreases when air velocity increases continuously and the bed height is start to increase. This is because the increase in pressure drop is offset by the increase in the bed height or porosity. The increase in porosity decreases the overall drag that the air acts upon the particles. The explanation can be proved based on the graph log delta P over L against log V. The log delta P over L increases with the log V until it reaches at turning point which log V is equal to negative 0.8 while log delta P over L is equal to 3.625. This region is known as ascending trend for which the bed is at fixed bed stage. 
After the turning point, descending trend can be seen with the value of log delta p over l. Decreases with the log v was further increased. In this experiment, graph log delta p against log v shows that the incipient fluidization velocity, which is 0 0.1585 m per second, and the corresponding pressure drops value is 371.5352 newton per meter square at the incipient of fluidization or minimal fluidization the particles separate and the bed start to expand the air velocity has only little effect on the pressure drop the height of bed increase continuously as the bed continues to expand and the porosity increases when the air velocity continues to increase. This can be explained in the theory that minimum fluidization velocity is a point where the pressure drop is just enough to support the bed and it also serves as a point that separates the bed from fixed bed stage and fluidized state. During this experiment, we can observe that when the air flow through the bed of resins at low flow rate, the resin remains stationary and there was only low pressure drop. The bed is fixed. When we increase the air flow rate gradually, the particles in bed start to move rapidly and the bed start to expand for which this stage is known as minimum fluidization. Also, Theoretically, the pressure drop will increase when the air velocity increases until it reaches at a certain velocity for which the pressure drop across the bed will overcome the gravitational force acting on the particles of the bed and overcome the friction force that locking the particle together in the bed. This point indicates the minimum fluidization and the pressure drop is maximum. When further increase the airflow rate through the bed, the bed experience bubbling, which air start to flow through the bed in the bubble form. After that, the bed experience slugging, which the air bubble is large in enough same as the diameter of column and able to separate the bed into two visible layer. Finally, the bed becomes turbulent bed which is porosity within particles are the largest and particles in the column are in the highest level. Next, table which consists of average height of bed, calculated and experimental pressure drop per length of height and minimum fluidization velocity are tabulated. We can observe that experimental delta P over L increase at low air velocity and decrease when air velocity increase continuously. However, for delta P over L calculated using equation, delta P over L decrease continuously with the increase of air flow rate. Minimum fluidization velocity is calculated by using this equation. The experimental value of minimum fluidization velocity is 0 0.1585 m per second and the theoretical calculated minimum fluidization velocity using Ergan equation is 0 0.4058 m per second. Theoretically, both values should be equal to 0.4058 m per second. This is because due to the Ergan equation assume that spherical particles and homogeneous fluidization occur, and it do not include the frictional force that exists between the particle and the wall of column. The experimental value of minimum fluidization velocity is lower than the theoretical calculated value minimum fluidization velocity. Also, the experimental delta P over L which is 
4216.9650 Newton per meter is lower than the calculated value from formula which is 5296.7615 Newton per meter. This may due to the various particle size distributed in the bed which influence the void fraction and fluidization properties which is the actual void fraction might be higher than expected causing the bed to be less back. So, the pressure to overcome the force of gravity of particles and friction force locking the particles together decrease. Next, table which consists of average height of bed, porosity, Renault number, free settling Renault number, free settling velocity and float number are tabulated. Free settling velocity of particles is synonymous to the minimum fluidization velocity of the bed. The free settling velocity calculated by using the correlation lewa is equal to 0.1436 m per second which is slightly higher than the experimental value 0.1585 m per second. This shows that the lewa correlation fits well with the experimental value when compared to the ergon equation. Front number is a dimensionless group of variables in order to determine the nature of fluidization. At experimental minimum fluidization velocity, the flow number is 3.7114 which is higher than the flow number at the unity which is 3.0464. If the flow number is less than unity, particulate fluidization occurs. Aggregative fluidization occurs when flow number is greater than unity. In this case, the fluid number at minimum fluidization is greater than unity. Thus, aggregative fluidization or bubbling fluidization occurs which is characterized by the air rising through the solid bed in a bubble form instead of particulate fluidization. From the graph porosity against Renault number, we also can observe that the porosity of the bed and particles Renault number increase when the height of bed increase. This is because the porosity is directly proportional to the particle Renault number. When the air flows across the bed at a higher velocity, which corresponds to a higher Renault number, making the bed height to increase, there are many spaces can be absorbed between the particle in the bed and thus porosity increases. This also fits our observation where the fluidization in the bed looks to be not homogeneous and a lot of bubbling occurs in the bed after minimum fluidization velocity is achieved. In order to have a homogeneous fluidization, particle size of bed should be made smaller. Next, in order to improve the accuracy of this experiment, we should avoid the errors that may encountered during the experiment, such as parallax error. The value of the height of bed and the value at the manometer was difficult to read due to the inconsistent movement of the particles of the bed and slightly different level of observation to the manometer value. Moreover, the friction between wall and air are not included in calculation, which lead to inaccuracy. This is because there may be some friction between the wall of the tube and the air as well as the equipment, which cause the pressure drop to be increased. The instrument limitation also contribute to the errors in data. The lines and numbers of instrument are not clear and the instrument for measuring pressure drop is slightly tight from the vertical position which may have result in wrong reading. 
more reading should be taken to obtain a more accurate average data. Let us proceed with industrial applications. The fluidization techniques can be applied in petroleum refining industries for the catalytic cracking process. Heavier petroleum fractions are converted into smaller fraction gasoline during this process. This is because biomass particles are exposed to high temperatures. The more volatile gases evaporated as the temperature increases. In the fluid catalytic cracking process, the feedstock is heated to a high temperature and moderate pressure and brought into contact with a hot powder catalyst. The catalyst breaks the long chain molecules of the high boiling hydrocarbon liquids into much shorter molecules, which are collected as a vapor. The importance of using this technology is the extreme endothermic process is easier to control due to the solid to dissolved bed behaves that's a liquid and the wide spectrum of hydrocarbons ranging from carbon monoxide and methane to long chain hydrocarbon molecules can be generated more safely. One of the most common applications related to air fluidization is the air fluidized bed for therapeutic use. This is commonly seen in the hospital. It is widely used to treat patients with burns or ulcers. In this application, each bag consists of a tank with a particulate material and a device which is used to blow a compressed gas through the particulate until the particulate becomes fluidized without being expelled from the tank. The lower part of the tank is made up of diffusion screen which is porous to allow the gas to flow through the tank without causing the particulate to be expelled out of the tank. In actual practice, the patient is supported on the bed as if that person was floating on a liquid of high density. This will result in a uniform pressure on the supporting surface of the patient and therefore, it will give a comfort feeling to the patient. In order to prevent direct contact of the small spheres with the skin of the patient, a porous sheet is attached onto the surface of the particulate material which will then allow the gas to flow out while retaining the small spheres. Now I'm going to explain another industry application of fluidization. Industry application of air fluidization is used in pharmaceutical industry. What is pharmaceutical industry? The pharmaceutical industry is the branch of chemical industry that manufacture drugs. To be more detailed about pharmaceutical industry, it discovers, develops, produces and markets drugs for use as medication to be administered to patients. The purpose of this is to cure patients, vaccinate them or alleviate their symptoms. In this process, fluid beds are used for drying materials such as granules, tablets, powders, fertilizers and plastics. Fluid bed dryers work on the principle of fluidization, a process where a material is converted from a static solid-like state to a dynamic fluid-like state. In this process, hot gas or air is introduced to a perforated distribution plate into the area holding the material. This hot gas pumps through the spaces between solid particles. As the velocity of the gas increases, the upward force of the particles also increases which causing them to equal the gravitational forces. This creates a state of fluidization where the particles are suspended in what appears to be a boiling bed of liquid. This is the continuation of the industry applications. By using a fluid bed dryer, the moisture content of pharmaceutical granules and powder can be decreased in a consistent manner. Fluid bed drying technology has replaced the traditional method of drying products in trays. Thus, 
This can result in shorter drying times along with even drying condition for uniform final product which will be the drugs. Thank you. Application of air fluidized bed in food industry which is agglomeration and granulation. The main purpose of agglomeration is to improve functionality of food powders by increase the particle size of fine food powders. The increase of particle size improves the wettability and solubility and therefore gives instant properties to the product such as baby food powders and daily milk powders. This process involves the formation of particles in a gas fluidized bed in which the particles stick together. The fluidized bed of solid particles is spread with a liquid containing the components to be coated onto the particles. The fluidizing gas is heated so that it will evaporate the liquid. Thus, the depositing the components onto the bed particles. This allowed the formation of particles in two ways, such as liquid in spray can cause the particles in bed to agglomerate or the deposited particles can cause the bed particles to form a multi-component layer granule. Multi-particles agglomerate are irregular in shape and they are porous because the size of particles is different and thus result in spacing between the agglomerate individual particles. Fluidized bed can use to coat larger particles such as nuts and confectionery such as powders. In conclusion, the apparent porosity of the bed can vary considerably based on the particles Reynolds number. The velocity increases with the increase of the Reynolds number. Thus, the highest porosity is achieved during the highest velocity. Fixed and fluidized beds have different characteristics. The increased trend of log beta P over L against log V is for fixed bed. Meanwhile, the freezing plan is for the fluidized bed. This is because the enzyme activity in a fixed bed is higher than the fluidization. That is all from us. Thank you.